Hello, welcome to Creative You Knitting and Creative <laughs> Knitting and Crocheting Podcast. It's a 15 minute spot in your life. It is a breezy, cold April day here in Pennsylvania. For all the warmth and the incredible like March heat that we had, it's almost like March and April got reversed. So yesterday we were talking about a new crochet designer. Well, new to me anyway, maybe not new to you. Rachie Nguyen. You know, it helps if you have a name that's memorable. Hey, Robin Partridge, <laughs> if you're watching, I remember one day a customer walked into my shop. We were meeting and greeting and she said, listen, I'm gonna tell you my name and you'll never forget it. It's Robin Partridge, two birds, and I've never forgotten it. Rachy is a just a neat, a neat name. I remember reading once that well-known men, famous men, are usually what we would consider nicknames like Mickey Mantle, Tommy John, baseball players. Not only that, they like to have two first names back to back like John Wayne. Of course, that wasn't his real name, but it's very memorable in our minds. When um, I married my husband, I was trying to figure out whether to keep my maiden name and some women, it sounds great. Like maybe it's Maria Blake Edwards, but me, it didn't sound right. <laughs> Coon Kirby. <laughs> so I was working on the From the Ashes shawl and what she says, sometimes the only way forward is to burn it all down and start again. Smash the broken systems, find a new way forward. So this is called From the Ashes, from the Phoenix Rising from the Ashes. And I had started it in Katia Air Lux, which is very light and airy. It feels like nothing. It is difficult to tear out. Once this is blocked, you're gonna see a different look. And somehow I just felt like I was getting lost in the words and where I was supposed to go and tearing out and not having my middle identified. And in crochet, it's worth putting that little marker in the middle so that you don't keep messing up. So sometimes when I'm having a problem like that, I get out another yarn. Now this is going to self stripe This is Louisa Harding Amatola which is maybe a fingering weight, but maybe a little heavier. And wow, all of a sudden, two in the morning, I am going to town. And you know what made all the difference? It was the chart. It's like when you're driving, turn here, turn right, turn left in 0 0.6 miles, you know, make a U-turn, whatever. You're just automatically doing what it tells you. But then you get out the map and you can see where you've been, where you're going, what's to the left, what's to the right. And that's when it really clicked. I could see the whole picture, what I was doing in sections repeated and how I was doing it. Don't be afraid of charts. If you haven't learned charts, embrace them. The logo, the symbols are always the same, except one time I taught a class with a drops pattern, capital D-R-O-P-S drop, and they took so many liberties with um, the crochet symbols and all, it was horrible. So I have stayed away from their patterns. We did a lot of stuff on fringe. I need my fringed Eureka today because it is cold and I found this pattern. Let me tell you the boho style the beads the tassels and all are coming back. There's the back of it and I like it. It's just lightly fringed. So 
You could do that with any shawl. So I'm excited today because I am going to finish a project. You know, I should keep some frozen cupcakes or something just for when you finish a project to have a celebration. You know, did you ever make a cake and you sit it in the kitchen? Hopefully you don't have ants because that is what we are battling now. My mother used to tell this story that one time they were having Saturday night company and she made a beautiful two-tiered cake, put it on top of the refrigerator, and later when she went to get it, there was a trail of ants the whole way up. So an ant-studded cake. Ants send out a scout. That would be like somebody coming into the yarn shop to find out what's going on and go back and tell their friends, yeah, they got great yarn and this is where you go. If you can kill the scout, you can avoid a lot of problems. So here is my garter, garter to go shawl done with a yarn called City. I like the yarn. It's actually three different strands, a fuzzy yarn, a hot pink, and a white. Um, it was funny because it just kind of looked like the shawl. And I was kind of surprised by their choices because I don't think I would wear a burgundy shawl with a red orange dress, but oh well. So what I had to do is pick up stitches and I kind of overshot how far I was supposed to go, but went all down the side and picked up stitches. And now I'm doing a peacoat bind off. So instead of finishing it, I will show this to you later. I thought I would let you in on how to do this. So I think with this yarn, my bobbles are kind of bigger than I wanted. But what you're going to do is a cable cast on. And if you've never done that, what you do is go through those two stitches. You go through those two stitches, wrap your yarn around the needle, pull it through the middle of those two stitches. Here it is and then put it on your needle. So now I have an extra stitch. I'm going to do one more. So I'm going to put my needle between those two stitches. I'm going to wrap the needle, bring it through between those two stitches. This yarn is a little bit, um, here it is, and I'm going to flip it and put it on my left needle. I have now added two stitches. Now I'm going to bind off four stitches and you could do that bind off however you want. You could do the knit two together that we learned or whatever, but usually the rule in knitting is bind off loosely. So there's one, two, three, By the way, last week or so, I had talked about Savannah and Matt Shaw, a father-daughter team that started singing on YouTube. Wow, Fox News interviewed them. I'm a chronic insomniac and I could not sleep the other night. They posted a new song and within like three hours, they had like 100,000 views. So now I bound off. Now I'm gonna put that stitch back on the left needle, and now I'm gonna start all over again, cast on two, bind off four. And I'll show you the results tomorrow when I'm all finished. Um, someone wrote and said they made a beachcomber shawl and it was way too big. Well, you know, it all depends. <laughs> I left lots of yarn. You know, I'm done playing yarn chicken. It is not fun. When you run out of yarn, especially when you're binding off. So I had to make a decision. Did I want a big shawl to cover me in this cold weather to keep me warm? 
or do I want a more decorative shawl? This is now about 41 inches, and when I block it, it's going to be longer. Some um, women will wear a shawl and put a belt here, and it kind of looks like a sweater, but your arms are free, and that is the nice thing. I have on my Glory Os, Glory X, it ends with an X, um, scarf on today. I love this thing. It's done with Queenland's Cairns yarn. I'd like to make a bunch and a whole bunch of colors. I think on a 19 needle, and it only takes a few hours to make. When it hangs, I think it almost has like a, a woven effect, but yeah. So I usually like to tell a story during the podcast, and this was kind of like on my heart. I was a nurse for years, and um, I read some books, and I had read a book written by a nurse, and she told about one of her patients. He was an older gentleman. He had been through a lot you know, surgeries, pain, suffering, whatever. And one day he threw his tray across the room and she went to him and said, look, you've had enough. Just let me do whatever. And, you know, we react or we respond. We like movies and TV shows because people react and there's, there's uh, clashing and conflicts and all that. But in day-to-day -day life, when somebody that's normally calm explodes, they need you to extend kindness. And it wasn't long until I was a nurse and I had that happen to me, where a patient threw a food tray, it just went flying. She had severe COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, her lips were always purplish, and I'm thinking what it would be like to have like chronic strangulation, feeling like you can't breathe, takes your breath just to eat a bite of food. And I did the same thing. I responded to her with kindness and gentleness, and later she said, honey, that wasn't me. That's not like me. I said, I know. Now, one day, this may happen to you with someone that you love. And it's good to do a run-through before the actual event. Role-playing is good. We have this game called Teen Choices, and you pick a card, and you read a, something that happens and how you're going to respond. The foster child we had, he thought the game was pretty lame. But you know what? The more I thought about it, it is really good because especially as teens, you get put in situations that you've never been in before and you don't know how to handle. I had a friend when I was a teen and she took a, a ride that was offered to her by an older man and on the way home, he reached over and began to fondle her breasts. She didn't know what to do. She, didn't, she was never in that situation. She was raised kind of subservient. And so we often don't tell our children and children don't tell the parents. I mean, she didn't go home and say, mom, dad, this is what just happened. So um, a few years ago, I had someone near and dear to me explode on the phone, curse words flying. It was horrible. My reaction was, hey, you don't talk to me like that. And where do you get off? But take a deep breath and react in kindness. The Bible has a verse, a soft answer turns away wrath. So I waited a day and sent an email. I'm sorry that you're hurting. I'm sorry for whatever I did that has caused this hurt and so forth. And that really helped. When you start condemning someone who's hurting, and just another story, when I was in um, training, there was a, a resident doctor who was very sweet, easy going, and one day she threw a chart across the room. And again, I re you know, caught up with her a day or two later, said, hey, I'm worried about you, you're not yourself. 
and she started crying. She was going through some hard times. So that's my little tip for the day. I hope you have a good day. If you're in a cold area like me, bundle up in one of those shawls. Get out those things you make. Wear your art and keep that smile and shine, baby, shine.